Do you want to know something really fun about this sport of fly tying? I was flipping through Federation of Fly Fishers, Fly Pattern Encyclopedia, just looking for some inspiration or something fun to tie. Now I was in the stonefly section because I haven't tied a dry stonefly in a while. And one pattern caught my eye, partly because it was colorful, but also because it had a pretty cool name. And the pattern I'm talking about, it's called the wing thing. Now there is zero information about this pattern out there, no pictures of it, certainly not any videos of anybody tying it. Well, tell this one. So it showed up in the stonefly section, but I'm really having a hard time envisioning this thing as anything at all resembling a natural stonefly. Now I know there are other crazy patterns out there that we fish during a stonefly hatch. You've got the Stimulator and the Madam X. Those things don't look anything like the natural either. But this thing I'm doing today, it's even farther out there. I mean, first, it's really kind of skinny. It's got a big white wing and it's generally kind of crazy looking. So back to my first comment. What makes fly tying so fun? Because I like this pattern, it was colorful, it looked like it was gonna be fun to tie, but I'm not gonna be tying this as a stonefly. I'm not going fishing out west anytime soon, and the stoneflies here in the mid-Atlantic, well, they're a lot smaller than this, and most of them are either gray or black. So I'm gonna tie this thing as a straight up attractor pattern. I might put a few of them in my terrestrial box, but for the most part, this is gonna be a warm water panfish fly for me. So that's my tiny bit of advice for today. If you see a pattern out there that you like, and you think it's gonna work on the fish you target, go for it. Change the colors if you want, change the size, just have fun. So this fly today, a simple little pattern called the wing thing. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a wing thing. Pretty nifty, clever little pattern. Certainly unique looking. Now, an odd thing about this, you said the sizes are as big as a six and as small as a 16. I think this and a six and a 16 are two completely different flies. I'm gonna go kind of in the middle, that's a 12. Here's a three X long curved shank hook. It's kind of my standard hopper, terrestrial, sometimes streamer, and sometimes nymph hooks. But let's put some orange thread down to about where the barb was. Now, some peacock curl. I'm gonna catch in a little butt section right here. Let's back that up just a little bit. And catch that in several wraps right here. Now I can snip or just break this off. I'm gonna catch it in to where I want it to be, and I think that's fine right there. And I'm gonna put my thread where I want the front of this little butt section to be, right there. Now what I do, I do three open wraps, just kinda of get my thread out of the way. Now we'll wrap our body, and we won't with this strand, cause it just broke, but if that ever happens to you, just go back here and start it over. Maybe I tied it in too close to the brittle end, and that'll happen. Okay, so we'll just do that again. Can I break that still? Yep. Okay, so that's where I want the front of my body to be. Three open wraps right there to get my thread out of the way. Now we can wrap this. And this is a little bit thicker where I'm wrapping it right here, so we should be fine. And if it doesn't make it thick enough for you, you can wrap it up and then, you know, do another layer over itself and back again. But I think that is thick enough right there. So remember these three wraps, let's back them up. And now my thread is right here where I want to catch this off. So a couple of wraps right here, maybe hold it tight, we can break that. A couple extra wraps, I'm gonna take my thread up front, hold on to that peacock curl, we'll use it here in just a minute. Let's catch in some orange floss. And I'm gonna use a synthetic, this is not a, a silk, but it'll be just fine. It's actually got a little bit of stretch to it. So let's catch this in right here. Don't worry about those fluffies. They'll be covered with some peacock curl in a minute. But I am going to wrap this down and back. It might just give me a little bit thicker of a body. If you want a thinner body, then just, you know, do one layer. But let's go ahead and take it down and back up. Okay, let's catch this off up here. Now that is still a very thin body, but that's okay. I kind of like it that way. The last one I did, I left it with a thin body and I think it you know, looked like it the flies intended to. So I'm just gonna try and bury a few of those and take the same, the rest of this peacock curl right here and catch this in. Did I leave enough to grab and break it? We'll see. Yep, sure did. 
Okay, and then do a, a thorax here about you know the same width as the, the butt there. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Now let's catch in our foam wing next. And I cut a little strip of one millimeter foam, just a little bit thinner than a hook gap. And here's one millimeter, and this size 12, I don't think I could really get away with a two millimeter. Here's what two millimeter is right there, and that's just gonna be a little bit too chunky for this fly. If you're tying it bigger, I think two millimeter would be just fine. Now let's go ahead this is probably the last one I'm going to do here so I don't have to worry about saving this excess foam. But I want it to be right up there over the eye. That's where I'm going to snip it off right here. So this, is, this part is kind of the head. And then we'll trim this back size to length in just a minute. But I am putting a wide, sort of wide little hot spot right here. And now we can go ahead and, and trim the back. And I want it to be just a little bit past the bend of the hook. And I am gonna go ahead and snip the corners off just because. Now the next thing we're gonna catch in, some legs. Just some black, thin rubber. And what I'll do here, I'll pull a, a good bit of my thread out and maybe have a, an inch and a half or so going forward, just enough so I can wrap it back over for the other side. So two or three loose wraps right there. I'm gonna go ahead and snip the, the back end, not to size, just a little bit longer to get it out of the way. Now I'm gonna fold this one over, this front piece, and a few more loose wraps right here. So no tight wraps on here yet. I just want to make sure these legs are kind of on the side and kind of underneath. Almost like a Madam X. I think we are right there. Now I can do some more wraps to finish out this hot spot and maybe a few tighter wraps as well. Now let's whip finish it and then we'll cut these legs to size. So the front ones, let's just snip them off right there. And the back ones, I want to be just a little bit past the bend of the hook. I'll grab them both at the same time. There we go right there, there's my back legs. And the front ones, I just want uh, little stubs right here. So there we go, a wing thing. A very unique, but kind of cool looking little pattern. Now I don't think this is gonna be a high floater at all. I think if anything, it's gonna just barely sit up there in the surface film, might be just a little bit under it. And if I was gonna finish it off with some head cement, I'd probably just put a drop right there on those thread wraps and call it done. So there you go, folks. Pretty cool little pattern, certainly fun to tie. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.